All right, welcome everybody. This is the final session of uh, Alka Archip Spring Season 2021. Uh, today, Slobodan and I will reflect on our past 10 years and uh, uh, some ideas maybe about today. And later on, we invite our friends to join us. And then uh, let's see where we are going. Um, very briefly, I want to start with uh, a few words on Halka. Um, some of you already know, but for those who don't, uh, we have initiated Halka Art Project in 2011 as a not-for-profit uh, art initiative. initiative. And um, I want to show you some of the images of our places because it happens uh, in three different places. And this is maybe the final image, but I start with it. It says hashtag Halka online because since COVID-19, uh, we don't have a physical space, but we are doing uh, our events mainly online. But the whole thing starts in the terrace floor of this uh, Yorchu Park apartment. This was uh, previously my husband's artist studio. Then when I was uh, in uh, doing my master's in art management, uh, I have this idea of doing something uh, in a physical space with some of my friends who were also getting this art management master. And uh, this flat was uh, empty back then. So this is the first uh, space we begin our uh, exhibitions and gatherings and even our artist in residence program. The whole flat had a beautiful terrace. So it hosted some of, of our uh, initial events. We had some nights and then um, just about six months after we uh, get together and start doing exhibitions. And uh, back then I was teaching uh, arts management uh, at Yeditepe University. So I come across with several art management students, art students and teachers and friends. So everybody had this energy and want to do something. So we begin uh, together. And six months later, uh, we come across to with this idea of artist in residence program, which wasn't very popular back then in Turkey. So we become one of the few places uh, who uh, uh, did this uh, program. Uh, this is an image from our uh, Palestinian German artist uh, exhibition. Um, and this is one of the rooms. We had three rooms and a main room. So the space was changing according to the needs of the residency project. But uh, very shortly next year in 2012, uh, we went to Moda we rented this three floor uh, building, which wasn't a big building, but it has also many opportunities. It had a garden, it had in each floor several rooms. So from time to time, we used one room as an exhibition space and almost always the uh, up, uh, upstairs was an artist studio where the residency artists stayed and it, they had a uh, studio in front to work in. And this entrance room uh, following uh, that year, uh, I mean, 2012 until 2020 um, became the room we almost refer to as uh, Slobodan's room because whenever he came to stay, uh, this was his room and uh, um, back large studio was the main area that we did our events performances mostly. So uh, at a given time 
for five years from 2013 to 2018, we had another gallery uh, because we had to divide uh, the residency program and other events because we were conducting workshops, artist talks, independent exhibitions. So both the residency artists needed a more private, semi-private place and the general audience uh, was able to come to the gallery space for other activities as well. But after 2018, we first lost this place because of the uh, rents. And then uh, in 2020, just before the COVID hit, uh, we had to say goodbye to this beautiful uh, building. And then we became uh, kind of not nomad, but for the moment online. So uh, as I said, the residency program hosted many artists, curators, musicians uh, from uh, very different places around the world. And the idea was that each artist or curator uh, bring an idea so that we can show something different, something uh, really essential and uh, open new windows uh, for the local audience or to create an audience who, who appreciate all sorts of different perspectives. And um, at the very beginning, I must say, in the first year, uh, we received the uh, letter from Slobodan saying that he wants to uh, come and it began uh, to be a very long standing and uh, solid collaboration between the two initiatives. So um, now I want to show you this PowerPoint in which you will see some of our uh, collaborations in this last 10 years and Slobodan and I will talk uh, briefly on each of the events. Can you see the uh, screen that I'm showing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now we can see your web page. Uh -huh. No, is it the web page? Yes, the web page. It shouldn't not, be. Not the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Wait, there is a. How can I change it? You might have to stop sharing and then reshare a different. Oh, screen. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I just switched. Okay, no. Now we see it. The full screen, if you know. Uh -huh. There. Okay. So first of all, I start by listing what we have done. Then I realize that it is quite impossible that we touch upon everything. So, uh, but as a as a brief summary, I can say we have done. Um, 16 exhibitions and uh, 11 performances in Istanbul and some of them uh, were repeated in San Francisco uh, the next year or the previous year so it had um, two legs um, but the initial uh, event was this narrative moment in 2012, it had um, a performance component and also it had uh, a tea and ink workshop uh, that Slobodan has given for the first time. This was, as I recall, the coldest, coldest day of the year in December. And we were uh, gathered in a moda seaside it was freezing and this is how I remember it. This friend uh, is a, also a teacher, was a teacher at Yedi Tepe, an Australian musician. Um, and uh, some of the 
other uh, friends joined him. Um, what do you remember, Slobodan, about this performance? Do you have any? Well, it was just um, a way uh, how simply to come together, which is uh, not inhibiting. So with this string, people just held it and um, had the didgeridoo player uh, mm -hmm. created a sort of sense of some other culture, some other place. And, and the movements were very minimal, almost just swaying a bit and playing with this rope. So it was um, the simplest way to integrate people who have, um, might even have a inhibition about performing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it was the coldest day in the century, <laughs> not in the year, it was the coldest Maybe. day. Yeah. Somebody said the coldest day in the century. So our idea then people will be sort of not exactly wearing costumes, but being sort of dressed to a slightly stylized moment, um, according to them, was completely gone. <laughs> At least everybody was warm. And um, then we had a, a performance in a theater, which was also, we had only one rehearsal for 20 minutes because they only gave us a um, certain amount of time, but we actually pulled it off. And that had storytelling and more movement and things which we kind of rehearsed. But we were planning to tell one of the stories there, but it was so cold. Then we went to a cafe and uh, ask people who are playing some games and making silent if they would just give us 20 minutes and we finished the performance there with slightly more uh, warmer environment <laughs> yes but the idea was yeah that um i come no no you can show that other picture uh -huh. um and then i come and um I draw with tin ink, which is something I do. And then we teach people who are interesting uh, to draw it. And then if anybody is also interesting um, to perform or do something, even if they have never done it before, they're welcome or if they want to see what we do. And then um, we met few people who actually can sing and tell. So, it kind of grew from one person doing something to um, a group of people um, sharing this tea and ink. Uh, and it's not great technique. It's really like a watercolor or wash. But um, I discovered it by accident. I spilled the tea on a drawing. And the next morning, it looked so interesting. So ever since, I'm doing that. So. But the whole idea of something simple to share and unpretentious, nothing to do with any biennale, nothing to do with any art paper, doesn't matter the result, it's being together and playing with tea. Mm -hmm. And yeah. years later, in one event, we have even made this tea and ink uh, drawings on wine leaves yeah right it was an earth celebration day terra madre and then instead of paper uh, people drew on uh, wine leaves and and the wine leaves which are um, made for sarma you know to, yeah. to, yes. to, and also um, we use um, a little bit of tea and lots of white paint because otherwise it's not visible and then we'll, we'll draw on the leaves. And mm. then we had them for quite a while. They dried, but they look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And of course, eventually they just crumbled. Yes. This is actually a very uh, distinct um, exhibition and uh, performance 
for me. For instance, personally, when Slobodan showed me this photo of two ladies, I was quite shocked because almost exact photo I had in my grandmother uh, from her uh, early days with her one of her friends, the same type of women. I guess it's the people from the 30s or 40s, maybe, not 30s, 40s, 30s, 40s. And the stories from our people uh, was based on the travels, train journeys that people made in uh, the uh, 20th century, um, usually starting from Sirkeci station in Istanbul, then crossing the Balkans, they were going to Europe to work. And both the exhibition and the performance uh, pay respect to that story of people. Um, this is the one of the entrances of uh, Sirkeci uh, train station. And this is uh, part of the exhibition. Um, we had the uh, photo block uh, representations of the artworks within the station because it stayed there uh, for day and night. And the original artworks of visual arts in uh, Halka Gallery. This is the inside of the station and uh, the opening day, people looking the works on the wall. It had a documentary part, uh, as you can see from here, uh, primary school children uh, were drawing uh, the train journeys or what they understand of uh, going on trains. So the inclusion was uh, also uh, from the primary school children to university students. Uh, um, they had also some designs, the uh, architecture students. Um, we had some photos from Archip archives showing different train station from the 20th century. Uh, Syria, North Africa, Southern Turkey. Uh, we had culinary students uh, recreating the food of the train journeys. So it was a collaboration with the, with the university culinary department. This is the children's drawings. As I said, uh, the photo block uh, versions of the original artworks were in the station, whereas the originals uh, were shown in the gallery space. Uh, simultaneously. This uh, jacket was made by a designer friend of us and this is uh, the jacket of a uh, train traveler, uh, imaginary train traveler. She had all sorts of necessary instruments and stuff on the pockets, uh, notebooks and pens and also uh, some imaginary tubes for collecting uh, plants on the way. Uh, this is from another angle. It also had drawings, installations, photographs. Slobodan's work was called In the Tunnel. <laughs> this one, it says in the caption. So this is the space I mentioned you, the second gallery space we had for five years. Uh, the exhibition was in there. And this is the um, performance part in the station. Slobodan. Mm -hmm. Um, what was um, interesting at that time, Kerry was visiting and then he played the uh, guitar in this. But um, what is very interesting, can you forward back or? Sure. Yeah, maybe this image uh, because it shows the station a little bit of the exhibition. Um, 
what, what is very crucial about uh, this um, is it's in a way completely opposite to an um, biennale attitude principle in which what is trendy and what is in the magazines that is allowed into a biennale, but children, uh, family photographs, um, reconstructing stories from real people, that's considered too outside the modernity. It belongs to something either quaint or old fashioned. So we um, had the freedom to do it without worrying about the reputation, without trying to impress anybody, just People who came across it were touched. People who come to see our performances often come again, not many, because always the place is small. But the defiance, and not an aggressive defiance, but poetic, carried, beautiful new movement, and an understanding of human story, plight, and psychology sharing something becomes the, the signature preoccupation and was the nurtured. We also grew through this uh, collaboration. We learn mutually from each other how to organize things, how to do it, whom to invite. So we didn't come with a finished idea what the art is. We kind of did it from year to year. So and you would see in some other projects and I touch upon some other ideas and mm -hmm. they were fantastic, this too. And they were both dancers, actors. They could be immensely um, deeply moving, but also highly comic in, in the next. And they were all kinds of vignettes from different stories. And you can see them from that image of the woman in the Anatolian uh, wedding dress to them becoming westernized and more modern and all kinds of things. And um, there was a character in a play uh, played by an older man and um, he was an immigrant, emigrant, and um, he wanted to go back to Anatolia uh, and to die. So he whispered something to them and then they all sang a Turkish beautiful song. And uh, the character has the words of the song written on the back of that bag. So because he doesn't speak Turkish, but he was looking at it. And so, and they were singing with, with him. And so the character completely appeared um, Turkish and at the end of, not even at the end of the song, at one moment, he just became still. He didn't get to Anatolia. He finished his life on the train. Mm -hmm. Well, the next year, uh, we did the White Line exhibition. Uh, we did it both in Istanbul uh, and then in Bonafort Gallery in San Francisco the following year. It was an exhibition of works by three artists, uh, Slobodan, Doğu, and uh, Belkus. Uh, the, and the main idea that uh, these are the people, the artists who uh, continuously use their hands in drawing or doing things since their uh, early age. And uh, uh, this is a work by Belkus. And the exhibition featured works uh, mainly done by white lines, following a white line. This is from Svoboda. That and is one of our leaves there. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> From the, yeah, the workshop. And, and this is the, 
those parts? And in 2014, we also did the ingredient, ingredients exhibition with one of the uh, chef and restaurant owners in Kadiköy, uh, Musa Dadeviran, who has a traditional local um, restaurant, local of southeastern um, part of Turkey, an Antep food restaurant. This is him at the opening, he came. Um, we were also showing his photographs and this is the uh, Chia, his restaurant. Um, and this is the food and culture magazine that he publishes. Uh, we had his photos and it, in the opening night, he explained one of the rituals uh, from that region, which was connected to food and also, of course, part of a culture. Uh, they brought food from the restaurant, spoon foods. So we shared with the uh, people coming to the opening. And uh, we were showing Slobodan's work and uh, Musa's work. Uh, what, what was um, very, very significant about it is uh -huh. that in the contemporary art gallery, we are exhibiting a culinary chef who does beautiful photographs and we enlarge them so they're substantial and, um, and giving him a space and giving space to food um, and what he prepared was the actual food. Can you just go back when he's pointing to the uh -huh. uh, to the ritual? Yeah, uh, it is the ritual which uh, woman in the Eastern um, uh, Anatolia do uh, in the fall. It's called gazelle, and the women walk on the leaves and. Um, uh, release all the frustrations and the heartbreak and the problems they had the year before. They collect the leaves, they cooked a very simple meal and that is the meal that was shared by the um, people. And then when you see the fire there, when the fire goes down and they can collect the ash, they put uh, ash of the leaves they have walked on and given all the pain of the year onto the uh, leaf and they put it on a stream or the river and they wish for the future for the kind of resolution or for help. So this kind of um, uh, a quality of a chef who is interesting, interested in culture. Um, the food, which is um, usually not considered worth putting in the art gallery, and um, the story behind it is something we cherished and we were able to do. Mm -hmm. Footsteps in the Sand. Um, it was the performance of the following year. Actually, I put together some parts from the performance just for you to see uh, the setting, the environment, feeling the atmosphere. Uh, some people talk in Turkish, some in English, and there is a song at the end. I'm just showing it very briefly and it's nothing professional i just cut and put things together so there's a sudden uh, there can be sudden changes from people to people just uh, don't judge <laughs> my technical ability because i don't have many mm, but 
how to play it.
Slobodan, do you have any comments on this work? Very short comment, and that is um, uh, the audience is um, uh, mostly on the left and people performing, but um, the performers in the audience are like a same um, body, they are not different. But what is important, and it's the same idea like what I mentioned, then um, it's not a trained, uh, uh, choreographed, precisely performed thing which could be repeated for 500 times. It is something which people want to tell. Um, Jelena, of course, it's a musicologist. She has her own um, uh, group, MOBA in Belgrade, which reconstructs. But also she sings from a tremendous passion for that music. So um, the intimacy and the unpretentiousness of it, the sharing aspect, which was the similar thing we wanted to do with the rope um, in the first one. It doesn't matter who it is, anybody could do it. The first performance was called Narrative Moments and subtitle was anything which happens in time could be a story. So this was like that. And um, that was the last story I performed. Um, and after that, I'm sort of really the grandfather in the corner and I want other people to tell the stories. And the intimacy of the space continued. This is probably the year when we had uh, maybe 10 people as audience, but in the following years, we haven't exceed to 25, I guess. We did almost with 20 people in the room. So it was very intimate each year. Everybody had their space to be able to see and uh, breathe the same air and the stage or, or the uh, audience place was not divided at all. It was all um, one and the same. And we, we repeated it uh, three times or sometimes four times. Mm. So, so, you know, 25 people at a time, not that mm -hmm. the numbers matter. Even mm -hmm. if three people came, we'll be completely fine. But um, just, uh, um, we always do that. The reconstruct, construct, and pre-construct exhibition um, was a meeting point between archaeology, permaculture, and art, uh, because Halka also worked with the Istanbul Permaculture Collective for a very long time. We were hosting their uh, permaculture workshops in the weekends when we had the second gallery. Uh, so in this one, uh, Slobodan invited both me and uh, Dilek from Permaculture Collective to be co-curators. So um, we had the exhibition and we had one um, workshop uh, created by uh, Permaculture Collective. It was our, it called uh, Our Hands in the Earth, the Gardens of the Future. Um, so for the permaculture part was this. And uh, we had also, as I said, the exhibition of uh, both artists from Turkey and, and San Francisco and uh, um, Belgrade and Paris, so it was very diverse. From the Craig's, Craig's class, this is from the Craig's class of mm -hmm. uh, uh, living history. Maybe later, Craig, you tell a few words about it. Sure.
And in 2017, we have the water vessels uh, exhibition. Uh, so Rudon, can you tell something about this exhibition? Sure, you can put the image here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Meltem, whose exhibition was. Um, she teaches design in a, um, you know, important, word important is always pretentious, but uh, significant uh, learning institution for design. But she's also interested in um, history of design and including the things which are in some way derogated by form follows function and everything has to be, uh, you know, Bauhaus uh, style. So she is bringing into this training uh, the relationship to the past. And she was trying to do a PhD about it, but, um, you know, these PhD processes are always very, um, you know, demanding. So uh, we had a collection of these vessels, uh, water vessels, and so she made an exhibition researching their histories, made these beautiful diagrams on the wall um, and created the whole presence in a uh, gallery space, in a fine art gallery space, the presence of designed daily used objects which have their own story and history. So it was a combination of scenographic arrangement, historical information, and celebrating the craft, the design. So it's uh, significant in that way that uh, it opens what is art. Well, usually in a year, we did more than one exhibition and we did one performance. For 2018, we had, uh, and I also haven't touched upon the talks or the seminars we did, but here in this page, you can see one of them at top. It says craft and art bridges against the divide. So uh, it is one of many uh, talks and uh, workshops uh, and um, teaching uh, seminars that we did together. Also, the main exhibition that year in the first half of the year was not one, but two, Woven and Embracing and uh, Transformation of the Given. Um, for that exhibition, actually for both of them, we have a short video uh, during which I speak in Turkish, but very briefly, I'm just playing it for you to see the exhibition and uh, the elements in it. And this was our cat, gallery cat, Inji Pearl, just sitting <laughs> as usual. Oops.
Yes. Yeah. So uh, what was uh, the first exhibition upstairs? This was two exhibitions. Uh, the one upstairs was all the textiles you sh sh saw was used in performances. Um, like uh, that, um, I want to go into it. It was um, uh, important because in the theater, uh, often uh, in the theater world, uh, costumes are considered secondary, not important. Um, two weeks before the uh, opening of a um, huge performance, they have a dress rehearsal and people don't even know their costume. But in, in um, Archie process, the costumes often come first and they're part <laughs> of the language. So, um, we wanted to celebrate that, that textile has its own place in the cultural expression. And this is part of the inclusiveness of discipline. And, and the other one is um, mostly about um, Olivia's knitting, which completely transcends um, the Art of knitting, each piece becomes an extraordinary combination of color, of textures, of sensibilities, uh, pushing the boundaries of what is knitted and what is an object, but they're all wearable as well. So we have them hanging on these transparent um, um, forms, which were designed by Melton and so on and so forth. And just to support them in color and presence, um, uh, we chose uh, um, Slobodan's drawings and um, Ipek found the colors which complement uh, uh, Olivia's tremendous work. So, um. Our performance in 2018, I guess it started first in San Francisco, then it came to Istanbul, right? Because this is the summer of 1980, 2018. And uh, I have found this um, external uh, drive with this treasure of maybe 20, 30 images I haven't seen before. So I have selected a few in here um, from the space and from the details. The details you see around in the uh, windows are also in separate images. After a while, when I was selecting these images, I noticed that I without knowing, only select the ones who are blue. <laughs> so I said, well, I should put something different as well. But then I came across with this caption, which uh, explains the exhibition elements. It says entrance panels with three portraits by Thomas Hetmanek of Istanbul artist Damla Eylül Uzun. She is Damla. Uh, associated with Halka Art Project in Istanbul. Archip has collaborated with Halka for the last eight years. Second, Tolga Ayıklar's photographs uh, in resonance with his music and singing in this Archip performance of 2018. And the third, 
It says objects and images from the Archive archives, a number of which have been imbued by shades of blue for Archive 2018 performance washed ashore. Then I said to myself, well, subconsciously, I'm kind of in the, uh, in the, in the same line with the curator's choice without knowing it, I only go for the blue. But also I have added other elements exhibited this is the dog's chair yes and Tolga and his instrument yeah he made it there he made two uh, of um, the same, and he plays these branches like a stylized tree and uh, sings um, and uh, Altaic, so it's Siberian lament uh, song, and it's um, an astonishing both piece of sculpture. And, and Katie kindly accepted it on her nature. Um, art and nature retreat, so it's kind of safe there. Mm -hmm. And also there were some videos. I've selected the closing ceremony. I'm sorry, I accidentally clicked. No problem. Forward it a little more. Forward it a little more. Yeah, go, go towards the end.
I want to close this one, but I'm scared to end the whole meeting. No. Okay. So, um, this uh, washed ashore performance repeated the uh, following months at the end of December uh, in Istanbul. And this photo was taken just one night after the performance. Uh, with the group. Slobodan, do you have a, any comment on this one or shall I move? No, let's, let's go. I love the performance, but um, let's. Mm -hmm. So, in 2019, uh, two exhibition, exhibitions uh, were presented in San Francisco. One was sent from Istanbul, and this was Lale's exhibition, um, her sculptures. And uh, the other one was Katie Wolf's exhibition. And I can just say a few, few mm -hmm. words. Um, the the Kate is, uh, has a um, an extraordinary project in the country where the, that um, Tolga's instrument is uh, art and nature retreat for high school students and um, children scholars youth who have actually never really had a contact with the country and so she has been. Um, um, diligently with great uh, commitment doing it. And then at the, at the fire, Californian fire a few years ago, back, it was uh, completely devastated. So um, we created uh, some kind of small support, uh, a place for her to reconstruct it. And uh, she drew with um, a burning tool on pieces of wood these works of art, which were mounted in the exhibition. And then I took both her and Lala's pieces to Portugal, which we had a collaboration and performance there and exhibition, and then brought them to Istanbul for our two, um, 2019 performance mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you Lala's one I have. Okay. This one. Later, after, after the PowerPoint. Okay. So when we come to 2020, uh, at the beginning of the year, it was almost for certain that we are uh, losing the gallery, Halka Gallery, a second time because of this uh, crazy rents and uh, landladies uh, wanting people, cafe people who could pay five times an art gallery could pay. So this is the last exhibition we did in that space with Art Ship. And actually the exhibition was entitled Poem as the Gravity Pool. And this is the second edition of it. A year before we did one uh, with the poem uh, by a, a Turkish poet. And uh, the second exhibition, uh, how to say it, was uh, my poem and three artists responding to it, Slobodan, Lale, and Doğu. Um, it was uh, called the Prelude to the Chant of the Earth. So the artworks were also in line with the mood and the uh, telling of the uh, poem. Uh, Slobodan was the convening curator and uh, I was the co-curator and Meltem once again, once again came as uh, the one who brings us the terrariums 
uh, within the space. Um, so this is what the a part of the ex exhibition looked like. At the center, we had this table. On top of it, the poem was in Turkish and English. And under it, we have uh, this beautiful kumquat tree on earth. Slobodan and Meltem designed it that way. This wall had those um, drawings and small trees. And this is a Meltem sculpture, uh, not Meltem, Lali's sculpture. And the right wall had uh, Slobodan drawings. I curated his part and he curated the other two artists. Or maybe Do did his uh, shelves. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yes. It was collaborative in all directions. Yes. There was no, no need for who is who. We just all enjoyed. contributed. Yeah. yeah. So this is how we said goodbye. And then COVID happened. <laughs> and then after uh, almost a year, uh, we found ourselves in Zoom. We did three lectures. And as many of you know, we did this year's performance last week through Zoom. So maybe in 2021 or 2022, <laughs> we do other things. But as the title of this meeting says, continuation, well, for the moment, we are creating things to be, can, that can be applied uh, to online meetings. And uh, this is our poster for this year. We started with three presentations, uh, paper presentations by Mette, Tolga, and Slobodan. Then we have the performance. And finally, now we are talking on the reminiscence of 10 years. And when it comes to continuity, yesterday I asked Slobodan if he can send me some photos of uh, Istanbul space. Many of you have seen it through the performance, the main studio at least. He sent me very beautiful ones. But I was thinking that maybe later on we will be able to see uh, the space in other occasions. So I selected this one, which I found very poetic, a sunset and old Jay on the balcony as if she's on a ship. And this is where the future is kind of cooked nowadays. This is the Istanbul leg. And on the other hand, this is the Bodrum leg in a beautiful day when I have the space and uh, the weather. This desk came here from Istanbul when the gallery was closed. It was used there for many purposes, for gatherings, artist meetings, sometimes for openings. Um, it was like a catering table. And now I use it as a office space. I have, when I have my computer and my coffee and my telephone, it's almost Hulk office in the garden. This is um, our house, but also an art studio and art uh, thinking space, let's say. We call it Art Halikarnassos in respect to, as a respect to the old name of Bodrum. So I think in those two places, we are already thinking about the future. What do you say, Slovoda? Yeah, well, I can tell about a few immediate future events. Um, uh, you can put me on the because I want to show Lala's. Did you have you have more images? No, no, that's all. Yeah, yeah. So um, put put uh, my image so I can uh, show. Just wait. I think I have to stop sharing first. Yes, mm -hmm. you're here. Um, 
is, um, um, which is Lala sculpture, so it's portable and she designed it in a, in a shell and different, um, different shells. And um, people just, just loved it. In Portugal, the, the village people came into this um, exhibition. It was in a cloister. It was in a cloister. And they just loved it. And one woman said, one of those has to stay here. I said, well, it can't. <laughs> but um, uh, the future, we are planning on the twenty. Uh, 1st uh, of uh, June to have the opening on Zoom of uh, Eddie's exhibition, uh, which we have, we have here in the corridor. So our corridor has become a little gallery. We're not going to call it corridor anymore, but a gallery. And um, then we are planning um, a performance at the end of um, November beginning of December, again with San Francisco and here. And then for next year, we'll see what happens, but we are, we are going not to give up in any way. <laughs> and we're also publishing small books. Um, so it will be some of our papers and uh, um, Eddie's uh, photographs of his work, and so on and so forth. So, and um, I know Meta has prepared something, and after Meta, if anybody wants to say anything, mm -hmm. please don't be shy. And um, let's keep going. <laughs> Meta? Hello, good morning and good evening, everybody. Again, uh, indeed, uh, I prepared the presentation, uh, very uh, big one, uh, but many of them a kind of repetition of IPEX. Maybe we can use uh, that long uh, presentation in future events, but I can share some uh, photos and maybe some flyers uh, through it. And while I'm sharing it, uh, maybe I can talk about our first meeting with uh, Artship and Halka Art Project. That's a good coincidence again. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, 2014. Uh, Ipek, can you give me permission for sharing my- Yes, yes, you, you can share. It's okay. Open. Now I think it is, yeah. Mm. It was uh, 2014, sorry, it's, let me come to the first point, yes. Uh, right after I think Sirkeji exhibition and performances, we met them in, in Karakoy, Architectures Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chamber of Architectures. Yes. Uh, Slobodan and Ipek uh, were setting uh, the exhibition, not started yet. Uh, but the photographs, the family photographs, the train station photographs charmed me. And I looked each photographs for more than, for than, uh, more than 10 minutes, maybe. <laughs> I don't know how long I looked at them. And when I was going to exist, uh, Slobodan said, hello. <laughs> uh, it was the hello of a, a long friendship. Uh, and uh, he invited me uh, to uh, their place, to the residence of uh, Hulk Art Project in Moda. Uh, and in our first meeting, Slobodan gave me um, photographs of uh, Martros Sarian's uh, watercolor paintings and said, uh, if you like, if you want, uh, you can tell, you can think, think a story about these paintings. Uh, I was uh, reading, tried to 
think about storytelling or uh, think about even writing a story. Uh, but then uh, when I sit in a cafe and look uh, in the uh, uh, Marcello Sarian's beautiful uh, watercolor paintings, fairy tales and stories are jumping to my mind and we started like that. And as you know, we, this is the first performance I took place with every year, once or twice, uh, with different uh, ensemble members. Uh, we did many um, uh, performances, but uh, before performance, rehearsals are very valuable uh, for me. Uh, performance says, okay, it's very good to share with our friends, um, maybe three times, four times. Uh, but before it, when we rehearsal, uh, we are not repeat uh, the same things every, every, uh, every day. Uh, that part is full of incubation and uh, supporting. We are developing our uh, stories during our rehearsals. All these photographs, I think, not from the uh, performances, they are from our rehearsals. Because you know, in, in performances, using high technology is not welcome in our ship approach. Uh, we usually uh, did uh, take these photos before uh, the performances. These are, for example, took uh, by Nisha Shahin, one of our ensemble members. Uh, these photographs are not from the performances. You, you know about them. Uh, these are, yes, yeah, supporting means not only the ideas, but also with the material. Uh, Nesha Shine gave and create these uh, uh, paintings, uh, uh, and sometimes I give some ideas, poems. Uh, these materials are shaving ones. Let me uh, uh, show them quickly to you after the performance of our, uh, I think, the third one. Yeah, Slobodan found a beautiful uh, photographs of Michelangelo's unfinished sculptures uh, in a old book sellers, and we mix them with the new uh, uh, photographs of the sculptures in uh, Istanbul Archaeology Museum, and mix them and create and mix with our uh, story. This is our uh, performance in United in San Francisco. This is the Bonafont Gallery's old uh, um, drawing. This beautiful photograph is also taken by Neshe, Neshe Shahin. Yeah, uh, in Halka Arts, uh, Arts Gallery, uh, we uh, exhibited uh, my poems and drawings about the poems. Uh, <laughs> this picture, this uh, photograph is uh, very nice, but it's lack of the shadows. You see, uh, there are five candles in front of uh, Ekin. Uh, while he's telling uh, his story, all lights are off. And while he started all candles, uh, shadows, there are 
five times two, I mean uh, ten shadows, ten uh, certain shadows. Uh, when while he is telling this story, Akin is uh, off the candles one by one and the shadows, but I couldn't uh, take that uh, photo that that occasion. One of our balls. Yeah, Hulk Art Project, a both gallery and residence uh, is a kind of oasis in Anatolian sites uh, of Istanbul. But there are many, there are very uh, few places that you can uh, share your ideas, share your uh, works. I remember uh, when you show the gallery parts uh, photographs, we also make some workshops for translation, poetry translation. Mm, yes. These are the seeds of future stories. They are still coming. <laughs> they will, they will. Mm. And most of these uh, photographs are uh, snapshots uh, of a video that we took before uh, the performances or after the performances. Mm. Yeah, this is uh, Kamala Tahamzadeh's uh, Women of the World. I used it in, in a story, in, a, in, in, a, in one of my grandmother's story, using them all my grandmothers as, as they my, my grandmothers. And this is finished, but if you have enough, if we have time, I would like to show you uh, this uh, PDF file from, uh, from our rehearsals. Stop share and let me find it. While you're looking, I, I want, can you hear me, everybody? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, when Matt came to this exhibition, the exhibition at the architectural place was a repetition of the Sirkeji station. So they asked, so we had children drawings and architectural mm -hmm. drawings and family pictures, everything. So we were all day there and we were just finishing exhibition. Uh, finally, this man came in and for an hour, he said that 10 minutes each. Uh, for an <laughs> ten, hour. 10 minutes for each. <laughs> uh, I have created an exhibition. I have sat in exhibition. People come in and I also come in and look a um, little bit. But very rarely have I seen a person in an exhibition carefully, genuinely looking at everything and we had captions, reading and And then very quietly, very modestly, just leaving. So, so then I said, hello, uh, hey, let's do something. <laughs> that's how. Thank you for that, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and here is it, it is. Once in a story, Eda, Eda Yaponar and Olja Karahan. It is very fresh, March 12th this year. Mm. 
This is not a performance. This is a rehearsal, but you see. It is full of poetry, really. Mm -hmm. And seagulls and pigeons, those are also playing with us. <laughs> Being a part of our stories. And with this experience, uh, I can say that uh, as a man of uh, literature, as a man of poetry and uh, written stories, uh, those uh, stories uh, telling by dances, by gestures are very more stronger uh, than uh, ordinary stories. Uh, Everybody can uh, write or think their own stories while watching those uh, stories without words. You can put your own words to them. Uh, and I learned this. Thank you, uh, Ipek and uh, Slobodan, very much to you. And thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. But good years. A small comment, and this is from uh, from a dead. Um, if there is only verbal story, after a while there is saturation. If there is um, movement, song, and verbal story, suddenly each one of them has an identity and feeds it. Mm -hmm. That's my humble opinion. So yes, stories without words are very important, but stories with words where we can also identify are crucial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, you Meta, for sharing beautiful photographs and memories. Craig, can you tell quickly the the thing about the um, history project. We couldn't hear you, Craig. Open your microphone first. Thank you. Do you want me to share uh, with images or just with words? Just with words, because do you have images handy? Yes. You know, just not too long, but... Um... I can go quickly. Yeah, yeah. So may I share my screen? Sure, yes, you yes. can. I think I can if I can if I can only find it among all of the things on my desktop. Uh, yes, here. Yeah. Can everyone see this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, briefly, uh, the Making History project was a simulation that I created in the form of a game, like a board game that takes place on the floor of a classroom. And this would be focused for students ages uh, 10 or 11 and older. And in the project, uh, the students undertake the uh, challenge of creating an original culture from scratch, starting with language and fire only. And it, it, they have to invent not only the myths and the traditions, but also domesticated plants, 
create villages, increase their population. That's shown here with the little glass stones and uh, develop their religion and all sorts of technological aspects of their culture, decide what developments as a group they want to uh, do next. And uh, there's lots of very heavy decisions if you have to choose between uh, developing your boats, let's say, or inventing agriculture. Um, trade is an aspect of the project uh, with little uh, goods hand drawn on, uh, on trading cards that students were either stationary merchants or itinerant merchants in the classroom. And uh, they, they uh, haggled and negotiated and um, all of these things helped generate towns and, uh, and you know, greater population centers. And then uh, visiting artists would come and present collections and uh, primitive technologies. For example, um, this is a gemstone collection just to familiarize the students with various aspects of material culture that are universal uh, or very specific to certain regions. And so here's a, we're teaching uh, drop spindle spinning with wool. And, uh, and you can see how populations, their math is integrated into the project as well. And, and, and everything is written. So it doesn't exist in one's culture until it's documented. So that's a, a little taste of the Making History Project, which is now going on in, uh, in three states in, in the United States. It's going on without me now. I've given it to the world and it's uh, apparently uh, the, the teachers reported um, that when we had to go online and school couldn't be in the classroom anymore, that it was the thing that the students were most excited about doing as an online uh, experience. It, it, it survived. And also, um, something's funny with the sound. There, it's okay now. Is it okay? It, it wasn't, but it is now. It's good now. Oh, okay. I wanted uh, people to get a sense of um, Craig's um, diversity of ideas and what he brings to any project. It's um, a tremendous um, variety of internal, from mythology to materials, to ideas, to performance quality. So. And that project has that in it. It's not just a simple invention. It has all these elements brought into it. So it's living. So I want people to see that. And uh, Dilek, did you want to say something? Hello to everyone. And I'm very happy to be with you in this night. Uh, I don't know the other countries and where are they and uh, the, the situation of it. Uh, but I'm very happy to see you again and also IPEC. And uh, Halka Sanat Projesi is one of my home. Uh, wow. We spent lots of time in there and uh, I'm going to talk about the cultural way. Actually, I'm an engineer and uh, my ideas and as an engineering way. But uh, I drop a very big C, which called permaculture. Uh, as a cultural way, we would like to connect the people in in under the uh, roof of Halka Sanat project, and then uh, we we designed some of the exhibitions, some of the meetings uh, about this self sufficiency, agriculture, food. Uh, the the titles of the uh, the the mention of the meetings of them, and then uh, lots of lots of people came, uh, and they would like to meet with art. Uh, the people who come for the art meet to the agriculture, and we would like to connect 
and we would like to hand by hand some of the things and uh, it, it, it was a meeting point and all of the people who work with uh, Istanbul Permaculture Collective, they miss the Halka art project and uh, <laughs> always ask to me about the art uh, project and the, the, where, where are they and why are they gone <laughs> and yeah, these yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. questions and luckily we are we are the under of the roof in the zoom and uh, we wow. can connect each other and i hope that we will do something again in the future uh, although it was an internet connection or face by face uh, it depends sure, on the but we were very very happy to being with you Thank you, the same here. Actually, Dilek and I, we know each other uh, since the days we, we didn't home. know how to run a bike. So we should be like five or six years old. And we never get um, lost each other, but from time to time, life change, you know, and then one day she called me saying that she has started this permaculture collective with one of her friends and it was the same time we have started the art project so uh, when uh, talking about our aims individually as she said we thought that we could do something together from time to time to connect uh, different groups of people uh to do something to learn from each other and we spent eight years i guess together in the weekends and sometimes with our chip sometimes with the uh, delay alone so uh we created many projects in the past 10 years what was the name of the uh, exhibition when the uh, rpdc was open and the exhibition is yeah, in the same time yeah, well, it happened several times because we <laughs> but, never but, had just one project. 30 people in one place. Uh, we have done a permaculture oh, design yeah. certificate course, and it was the exhibition. The uh, course, 30, uh, how can I say, it? Uh, they sit on the same place with the <laughs> exhibition, and we drop off the chairs uh, during the uh, uh, open ends and and the the how can I say in the intervals in between classes <laughs> they were leaving their <laughs> chairs and we were collecting somewhere <laughs> and the people came in and they look at the exhibition and then again we put the chairs and <laughs> a lot of the issues came in the same place the art the education and permaculture <laughs> and design everything in the same place we designed the uh, water, we designed the situation of uh, self self uh, sufficiency and all, all of the things. We, we are designing something in there and educating something in there. And the, on, on the other way, Slobodan says, do not touch our arts. <laughs> <laughs> very but kindly. Was, I could have it was very funny and it was very uh, good times, good old memories. And I hope that everything uh, comes again and we can do something again. Thank but, you. Um, uh, we are planning to do I some... Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. We are planning to do I some design for school children and youth about um, yeah, both um, growing plants uh, in urban environment, combined with a sense of uh, environment and and horticulture, agriculture. So maybe we could do about it together. I wish. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so Can I add something? Please, please. Sure. Just wait. Where are you? Because Sloboda mentioned uh, the uh, metal tree. So I want to thank some many people, actually. So thank you, Ipek and Slobodan, for everything. So and all all people in Archip and Hawk Hawker. Uh, and thank you, thank you, Tog. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but 
uh, the funny thing is the first tree I made in Istanbul was I only made by myself. It was a and it's built it and it's ready to play at my salon right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really happy that it stays uh, the second one in California. But actually, I didn't build it, it only by myself. So, uh, so Katie, uh, Katie Wolf. We were staying with Ekin and Katie Wolf, uh, Ekin and at Katie Wolf's house, and uh, she gave the opportunity to work at her house backyard, and with a lot of help of Carrie Yates every time, uh, we drew all around uh, San Francisco and f found uh, scrap metal or scrap things to. So we were really lucky, actually, but. Anyway, we, we found it, but uh, I don't know, because of some machines and mechanical problems, I couldn't do it, I needed help. So everyone involved and Katie's neighbor, uh, I forgot his name, I'm sorry. And he gave us, borrowed us a, a press drill. And with the help of Ekin every every morning from 8 to 12 or half past 11, we work on backyard. So Ekin was watering the steel to, because it was heating a lot and we were lost a lot of drill bits. So uh, I could only find that kind of steel, but it wasn't working that I was expecting. But anyway, so we done it, but so thank you everyone because, and of course Slobodan helped a lot. And it wasn't only my thing. And this is the most beauty, beautiful thing because I didn't done it only by myself. We done it together. So thank you everyone. Oh, and thank you. And um, now as a, as a dad, I have to say something. And, um, um, Tolga came and said, uh, I'm not exactly, I can't remember exact words, but the feeling was, I have an idea, but you won't like it. I said, well, tell me the idea. He said, I want to make an instrument. And it was like, I know you like old instruments. And um, I said, well, let's find out, let's make it. And then the combination of, he tuned them into pentatonic tones. It wasn't like some um, uh, facetious modernist thing. It, and then acoustics of the thing. And then with the bow and how he evoked the space and then sang throat song of this lament, but Laments have a tremendous uh, neural revitalization because the, the sad songs in paradoxical way, way revive us. So the power of that performance and the intensity of wanting to do it is what is most remarkable. So, uh, we were lucky to hear it. So it's <laughs> Thank you. I would like to add something. I'm very, very, very uh, happy to work with you. And uh, so much thank you both Ipek and you being to my family, because mm -hmm. I feel myself uh, when I came to Salka's art project, I feel myself it, it, was, it is at my home. And it's in my second home. So thank you. thank you very much to being part of my family. Thank you. Thank you. It means uh, a lot. We'll just zoomify all together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> may tell, I, may tell your people who ask about Halka that we are just zoom. in the air somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> zoomify. Somewhere in space. <laughs> Somebody want to say something? Yes. Um, you know, Meta, when you said that uh, the Halka was like an oasis, 
Um, we had the same feeling here in San Francisco at the Bonafont Gallery. One artist I know who came to some of the ex exhibitions that um, were in your presentation, Ipek and, uh, and Meta, uh, she said afterwards she voluntarily wanted to, to clean up and do, do dishes together <laughs> at the end of a, a performance or a, a gallery opening. And she turned to me and she said, I'm in my 50s now. I've been living in San Francisco for 30 years and all the time looking for a place like this. Mm -hmm. And I've only now just found it. Mm -hmm. And it, it is exactly for her that feeling of uh, finding an oasis in the desert where it seems like there's so, so much culture everywhere, but, um, but, but finally there's some water from real soulful heartfelt water to drink. So thank you so much, Ipek and Slobodan. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Anybody else wants to say something? No problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you all. And we'll, we'll inform you about the Eddie's opening on the 21st. Please. Please do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being Thank with you. us. It was lovely, you. really lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope to see you. Yes. See you in June. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Much love. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>